My friend Richard called me up and told me he bought a Sunseeker, which was very, very exciting right up until the point where I saw it, because it's this. And this, I think, is what we call a project, but there's no better man to take on a project like this than my friend Richard. So this is your new Sunseeker? Yeah, this is the new project. So really excited about this. This is a, a Superhawk 34, uh -huh. which is a personal favourite of mine. Right. Uh, from back in the day when I was uh, working in the marine industry. You can see the sort of underside of it has not had a lot of love. We're gonna have all that sand blasted off. We've got a guy that's gonna come around and do a very delicate sand blast to get us right back to the hull. Right. So we can inspect the hull, make sure she's all good, do any necessary repairs on it. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna go quite bold with it, which is a, a color of mine which I've seen, which is a, a red and a black theme. So everything that's currently stainless steel is gonna be black. Right. It's gonna be powder coated. The screens are gonna come off. They're gonna be powder coated. Yep. We've got quite a nice idea that we're gonna do with the radar arch, which is why the top of the radar arch is off. Okay. Um, which is we're gonna put quite a nice modern T-top on it. So oh, wow. Forward wood cover, yeah. which is in fiberglass, which we're just designing at the minute. Yep. And that will sit on top of the radar arch, which will give it a nice bit of sun cover and also lift it to the sort of modern look. Yeah. So we're going to try and enhance it as much as we can to a modern look, but also keep some of the original Sunseeker look to it. It's got a pair, currently got a pair of uh, KAD43s. Okay. DP drives. And you say currently, it sounds like you've got plans for those. Yeah, they're both coming out. Right. Um, we, what the, the plan mainly is to get the boat completely stripped. So we're just working on hull and deck. Okay. So we're not going to leave anything behind, wiring, plumbing, sea cops, anything like that is all going to, again, completely bare shell. Right. And then we're going to build new from there on in. So we're going to fit a pair of uh, D4 300 Volvos yep. uh, with the joystick control. Uh -huh. We're going to remodel the uh, helm area and we're going to have a glass cockpit. Uh, we're going to keep some of the stuff we're trying to gonna, uh, go switchless. So we're going to go into a touchscreen situation for all the controls. Wow. We're going to remodel the upholstery. We want a better helm seat. Uh, we're going to change some of this cockpit layout. And of course, we'll have the sun top on here. And we're going to pull all the decks up. So it's yeah. going to have all new uh, gray and black decks. Okay. Uh, and we're going to do some of that on the fore deck as well. Yeah. Wow. So all of this is coming out then? Yeah. All the whole dash. So there'll be no instruments on it at all. It'll be screens. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. But it still looks fantastic, doesn't it? You've got this wonderful curve of the whole stainless screen and the way the bow arcs away. Yeah, and I think of a boat that's 20 plus years old, to have something that still looks so good. I mean, there's a lot of boats 22 year old which look incredibly dated, in my opinion. Yeah. This Superhawk, I think, still has some really lovely lines. Okay, I think the uh, the term is a work in progress. Yeah, watch the puddle. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You are a braver man than me, but you're also a much more capable man than me, so uh, I think that's probably a good thing. So I think the idea we discussed is that we're going to follow your project. We're going to come and visit yes. you on a regular basis. Yeah. You're going to let me know every time there's some updates and some more progress has been made? Yeah, that's it. We'll sort of get it through milestones. Um, the engine's coming out, it's going to be a big one because that sort of removes the old ready for the new. Yes. Um, but yeah, more than welcome to come around and we'll show you every stage of what we're doing. Perfect. That's fantastic. Okay, let's go past this small lake. So that's about it for the minute. That looks like a really fascinating project to me. I'm really keen to see how Richard does with this. So this is Nick and Richard from Project Sunseeker. There it is, hiding in here. And over here, <laughs> it's a bit of dashboard. So clearly things are afoot. Let's go on down through. And here she is, indoors. And have you built this for this? Yeah, so we just put a, a basically a workshop over the boat just to be able to keep it undercover. That's very impressive. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, all it needs is doors at each yeah. end. <laughs> That'd be They're quite warm. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Cool. So, what's changed? What's new? Well, we have basically, I mean, it, it doesn't look 
drastically different to last time you saw it. Right. But we're still very much in the strip out phase. So we've taken a lot of stuff out, a lot of stuff's off the boat. The handrails have just come off now. They're ready to be um, powder coated. We've mainly been working on the mouldings for the hard top. Okay. So the T-top is all done. Um, that's been made in carbon fiber. So we've done the whole process from uh, the mock-up which is just made out of MDF, yep. just to visually get the look of it. And then on from that, we did the 3D model of it and then cut it on the CNC machine, made the plug, made the mold, and now we've got the product. So wow. it's been a, bit, a lot of work in the background yeah. to make that T-top. So that's looking fantastic. That's all in carbon fiber and been made. And that's why these uh, arch stanchions are still on. Right. So that we can put that on to mock it up to see what, it's, um, see what it looks like, basically. Perfect. Uh, and other things we've done are like, you might notice the helm is now missing. Well, I walked past it on the yeah. way in. <laughs> <laughs> so that's next in for some major surgery because the helm historically uh, was the round gauges, the needle gauges yep. uh, and small instrumentation. And because we're going for the glass cockpit uh -huh. with the 16 inch screens, it just doesn't fit at all in that old concept. Right. So we're making a new mold, which will sit over the top of the existing mold, okay. which will house the glass cockpit. Right. So that's the next task for major surgery after that. Wow, fantastic. I noticed that the out drives are missing. Yeah, so all engines, drives and everything are all out and gone. Right. Which I'll show you underneath here shortly. Yep. Uh, all wiring is out, all plumbing is out, the fuel tank's out, everything is gone. We're trying to get it back to the shell. Yes. So that we can inspect everything, make sure everything underneath it is okay. We found a few little things like in the anchor hatch, there's a bit of delamination which we can sort. Uh, the fuel tank, I wanted to inspect that, take that out because we're having these new engines in it. The last thing we want is a dodgy fuel tank or some contamination. So that's been out, uh, flushed out and is all sound. So that's waiting to go back in, which is nice. Um, and then we've done little bits in the cabin, which is the new sort of layout. So we've put sort of uh, some bulkheads in, moved some seating stuff around. Decking actually came up in nice patches. So we've been able to have those scanned. So when we put the new decking in, we, we don't have to scribe it all in because we've got copies of it all. Excellent. Uh, sort of the lazarette area has all been stripped out, no pumps or anything. There's a little bit of uh, pipe work left in there. So we can just pull that through. Try to knock everything over, there we go. Uh huh. So that's good, and that's the helm area that you can see is missing now. Wow, yeah, yeah, that really is back to basics, isn't it? Oh, and the screens, obviously, they've all gone. So they're oh, yeah. the powder coaters at the minute, having all the stainless steel done. Right. Um, they're being done as we speak, so I would say a couple of weeks they'll be back, but we won't be putting those on until we've painted all the boats. So we're yeah. just sort of slowly getting bits off, getting out, shipped out to people. Stuff with like long lead times and that we've been working on. Yeah. And stuff that requires a lot of enthusiasm because if you do it at the end, you've lost enthusiasm. So things like the arch, uh, the T top, and the helm are really good jobs to tackle first, whilst you've got good enthusiasm and lots of energy to get stuck into them, so they don't suffer at the end of the project. We've remodelled that area. So I don't know if you can remember that was a, a slightly shallower wardrobe that was set on a bit of an angle. Uh huh. So we've pulled that out. Uh, Re-glass those bulkheads in. Uh, we've put a TV unit there. Oh and yes. One of the key things is I wanted to reshape the bed because it was never big enough on the Hawk 34. So we've pulled this bulkhead back a bit, so we've got a nice berth that you could actually sleep, you know, comfortably in. Yep. We've remodelled this seating area to kind of a bit of a chaise longue type thing with a, uh, which will be an also an occasional single berth. Right. Excellent. Uh, yeah, because this was more of a sort of a big U here, yeah, wasn't that's it? that's right, that's it. And that's now more like an L shape, I guess. Yeah, and then the galley will go into that area there. Uh, all the bed we've redone with the uh, sole of the bed, all been recovered with all the removable hatches to get to things like the bow thruster. Lockers which have gone in, we've got some really nice light detail inside the locker door, which later on we'll fire that up for you towards the end which looks quite cool so you can't see it now but when you turn it on it's inside the door oh nice yeah so yeah be quite cool yeah um uh, and electrical systems going in the new system which is in that locker behind you yeah uh, which that'll do all of our automation so we can monitor the boat remotely and we've got all the touch screen stuff so if i'm sat at home i can put the fridge on i can put the heating on all from my uh, laptop at home. So you might have seen behind you where the telly is, is we've taken the porthole away and filled it in. Oh, okay. Uh, the main reason for that was they were quite small and because the boat's quite low to the water, I felt it's better to bring the light in from above your head. 
So oh, okay. on the foredeck, we've got some glass panels that have been made, which will sit on the foredeck. And then just above your head, there'll be two square hatches uh, of light, which will do a nice trim detail around. So the light will come naturally from the top rather than through the portholes. Um, and yeah, and that's that little section there is next to make up the galley and the new equipment in for there and then some cabinet work across there. Okay, so them holes normally would have things through them. Yeah, so that would be where you can see the engine feet there, the beds, that would be where the engines would have sat. Yep. And the transom shields and then the drives on the outside. Yeah, of course. I mean, and so this is having a pair of D4s in it? D4 300s, that's it. Wow, that's going to be great. Um, uh, and we're just waiting for those really to turn up. Uh, it's why we haven't really done a lot in here because we need to offer them up to see how close they are. Uh, we've measured all the transom and done some drawings of the transom for a new transom shield. Um, but we really need to wait for the engines to be, be able to move to that next process. Yeah. Um, but we've stripped everything out, so there's no electrical equipment, plumbing, anything left in there. Wow. That's all ready for a fresh start. We've put some sound deadening on the front bulkhead, but other than that, we're just waiting for some engines. <laughs> so the other thing that, uh, that you mentioned is you, somebody got in touch with you via Aquaholic to yes. say that they were involved in these boats initially. Yeah, really, really interesting uh, guy and a great conversation and all basically through your channel and your followers. Um, it reached Australia right? Um, and a very nice chap called Steve Ford, who was the original designer of this boat at Sunseeker in 1996, contacted us and said he loves the boat, loves what we're doing, would be really interested to help us in any way with any information we needed. And we had some really good conversations with him about what we were doing with the boat. Um, he showed us some uh, renders of the boat that uh, they were thinking uh, other concepts of this boat when they were designing it, which was really interesting. Um, and he's gone on now 25 years later, designed some really nice boats and is a, a boat designer. Um, and what was really interesting, I, I felt, is I kind of put it to him and said, if you got the job to redesign the Hawk 34 for Sunseeker, what would you do? And he came back and he said he would be very true to the boat and keep the, the long pointy sports boat and not go beamy and, and have all about accommodation. Uh, and he said he would do a T-top, which is what we're doing. He'd put the new tech on it, obviously the latest engines, some of the glass, you know, a lot. It was really nice to hear that all the stuff we're doing is the sort of thing that he would do if he was to redesign the boat to a 2022 spec. That's fantastic. So that was really interesting, and through the power of Aquaholic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice to know. Yeah, really good. I was really pleased with that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Look at this. Wow. See it glistening in the sunlight? Yeah. So we've been able to paint the top section. Okay. Um, and we're doing it in uh, several different stages. So what you can see at the minute is the four decks been done and the sides, and the T top is in place and the arch legs. So come and have a look. Awesome. Can we go up this ladder? Yeah, you go that side. Right to this side. Wow. Yeah, that looks very, very different. So we've got the glass uh, pour deck there with the hatches in, so that'll make a really nice uh, light feature in the cabin. Okay, that's this area up here. Yeah, it's yep. just the central one, which has got the two cutouts in it. Okay. Uh, and we filled in one of the existing hatches and just put the glass on it for the detail. And right. We kept one of the other ones because they tweak the, tweak the layout inside. Uh huh. Um, and then we've been able to fit up some of the new um, deck hardware. Ah, this is what you were telling me about doing everything in black. Yeah. And we've been able to put the rubbing plates on so that it'll protect the paint a little bit. Nice, that's a good idea. Yeah. And then things like the anchor locker, we're just fitting up that new windlass. Okay, yeah. We've been able to put. Uh, all the flow coat in to make it look like brand new everywhere. Superb. And all the backs of the lockers. Yep. Yeah, that looks really good actually. Signal Red. Okay. It's an all grip product. Right. It's a really nice product to use. Yeah. You can see there we've done the, the gloss black of the engine vents as well. Yep. Which, it, from this angle, you can see how the arch legs and the red and the black. And yeah. We'll continue that area of the hull in the red okay with a black boot stripe yeah and then this section here will also be gloss black which will flow into the back transom oh nice yeah superb so yeah you can really see from this angle the contrast between the original versus the new red and black absolutely so you can see here that how we painted it in the sections 
Uh -huh. So the next phase for the paintwork up here is to paint this in a cockpit area. Right. Which again, will be red and black. Some of the loose items like the seat boxes, the cabin door, they've already been painted. Yeah. But we just need to get into this cockpit area now, which is what we're prepping. Indeed, and it looks like there's progress on the dash as well. Yeah, so that's the mock-up for the new belt. Okay. So what will happen there is we're just waiting for the engine to turn up so we can put the, the helm boss in to right. make sure we get that right. Yeah. But basically the new screens will go here. Okay. That will be the Garmin screens for the engine instrumentation and the nav gear. And then that one will be our uh, operating system for the boat. So that will be where you'll switch all the lights on, anchor, that sort of stuff, nav lights. And then on top of here there'll be a nice um, upholstered dash with a bit of a visor on it and the compass will be in there. And then we're keeping the, the controls in the little pocket that was in here which is an original feature. So the next stage for that is uh, to take a fiberglass mould off of it which then means we can produce the component we need. That's amazing. Uh, the T-top, so yep. that's on now. Okay, yeah. That's uh, it's got to come off because we've got to paint it. So basically we had to put this in position to be able to set the underside and then the top gets bonded to the underside. Then it'll come off as one piece and then fix it back on. Wow. And that's going to be black? That'll be lacquered. So you'll see the carbon fibre weave. Oh, nice. Because that is actual carbon fibre, I think yeah, I'm right yeah, saying. Yeah, in fact, if we look up to there, there we are, I can see it now. So on the, on the top section here, what you'll see there is we've got the radar arch um, support which goes on there where the radar sits and then we've got some VHF aerials which go on here and then this middle section we've got a flat solar panel. Okay, wow. So that'll sit on there with a nice radar and all of that's done in black powder coated so it should look quite mean and obviously all lacquered once, once we've done. People have said to me, oh it's a brave move doing it in the, the red but yeah. I think when you see it with the red and the black, black yeah. it does work and I think the commitment to the detail with regard to doing all the stainless in black as well yeah. really sets it off. Like if you don't commit and do the whole theme then perhaps it could look a bit wishy-washy because you haven't done everything but the fact that we're doing everything yeah. and the, the gloss work on the exposed weave I think that'll look really nice as well. Yeah, definitely. Superb. So, on track? Uh, yeah, kind of. If we had the engines here that would make a big leap because we can start focusing on that rear section and it'll give us some uh, equipment so we can finish this stuff off but as you can see we're not short of things to do. No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Mr. Richard, How are you? very well, good afternoon. So we're another step on, I understand. Yeah, really good. Got uh -huh. some, made some good progress and we've got some real nice treats to show you. Oh, fantastic, I can't wait. Right, oh so my God. The boat project. Wow, wow, I was not expecting, I know you said you moved on. Yeah, so we've had both <laughs> sides of the hole and all the deck now painted. That's all the black for fitting back up. That's unbelievable. That is an absolute, I mean, it's kind of like, I expected it, yeah. but yet when you see it. Yeah, I think once you start fitting up the black stuff, it really starts to look stunning. That's fabulous. And I'll tell you what as well, and I, and I, and I, I probably wouldn't have said this before, <laughs> but I was a little bit unsure about the color. Yeah. And now I've seen it, actually, no, it is, it's spot on, isn't it? I, I kind of thought it would be a bit brighter than that, which sort of worried me, but that's like a, it's almost like a cherry colour, isn't it? That's, yeah, yeah, I think, you know, I was exactly the same. I'd seen the colour, I liked the colour, but I was kind of nervous to do a whole boat <laughs> in the colour. Yeah. But I just, I just thought, I've got to do it. And I had a vision with the black and the red. And I think the more I put on with the colour and then contrasted it with the black, I just, as, as every bit I was doing, I was thinking, oh, this is going to look great. This is going to look great. And we've been able to do all the Sunseeker uh, logo oh, but yeah. lacquered in so it's not a decal we've put it on and then painted it in wow that's and that is that side there is straight out the gun there's been no polishing on that at all yet really and that just shows how good that product is in my opinion yeah because to get that sort of finish in this environment which is not ideal yeah but we do it as best we can to get that sort of finish I think is mega for a product like that yeah yeah and that's had because it's got the two colours, I think it's had about eight coats of lacquer over the whole lot, so you'll get that real depth of gloss to it. Yeah. 
and that gives you the ability for that product as well to if there's any marks in it or anything that's sort of a small blemish you can rework it and polish it and it comes back up like a bit of glass basically that's fantastic and then the next major bit is this cockpit section through here right which I've left due to the fact that we've still got engines to fit uh -huh. and it'll be a high traffic area yeah and we've got some modifications to make to the engine room to cut things out to get the new engines in right so next phase is engines in and then once we're happy with the major part of the work done we'll then paint out the cockpit area oh, look at that let's come right up here That is sensational. That is going to be such a head turner when it's on the water. Yeah. Awesome. And I couldn't help but notice this fella over here, which we walked straight past the first time. Yeah, so that is the top section of the T-top. Right. It was on previously, Yeah. but we took it off because it needs a high building in the lacquer. So that's had six coats of lacquer now. Uh huh. And that'll just want another flat, and then it'll get fitted to the hard top, and we'll paint that in place. Right. To get the finish in it. And we've had some nice handrails made which are the shape of it there so if you're walking down the side deck you have got something just to grab hold of yeah right up into the screen yeah and then we've got all the powder coated black radar stand that goes on there and the aerials which sit on there the mdf pattern that's on the boat there that was the mock-up of where the new drives sit right so you can see they're slightly wider than the previous holes the previous hole was there yep and these ones need to be slightly wider so we made an MDF pattern, mocked it all up to make sure we were happy with it. And then we've had a stainless steel plate cut, which will be bonded to the transom, and then a mirror one for the inside. So it'll be two plates either side of the transom. Right. Which will now, um, and then we'll be able to cut this out, fill that in, seal it all up, and the new transom shields will go on there, ready to be able to mount the engines inside. Okay, and that's because it's the latest engines and latest drives, which yeah, are slightly different to the, yeah. the engines D4 and drives. Yeah, slightly different, uh, slightly different length, slightly different width to what was in there before the CAD 44s. Understood. So we had to, and the engine beds uh, where the engine mounts sit, they're not quite in the right position either. So we've got to move those. So there's a lot of sort of mock-up stage, dry fit of stuff, make sure it's okay, then everything back out then go for a full fit and bond everything in and do it so it's quite a process yeah absolutely and the idea of this sort of sandwich effect you're talking about is presumably to give it more strength yeah because inherently what we would do now is you would cut that out and you'd end up with a potential weak spot on the transom where you've cut a section out and put a section in it wouldn't be the solid transom that it used to be so what we've done with the plates is made a sandwich of the transom plus the repair inside so we've got belt and braces basically on that Wow. to make a really nice job of it and we made a, an engine out of MDF to be able to see so that was our wow. stern drive <laughs> and that mounted so that we could check it that mounted on there right so that we could check that the skeg here was underneath the hull okay so, the engine, so it doesn't cavitate and we don't get any overheat problems right so we were able to Instead of getting all the engines out of the box and trying to handle all the drives, we made a, an MDF pattern of the stern drive, which is one thing. And then when we put the engine in the boat, this is a profile of the engine, and these are the engine feet. So we were able to mock that up with a little jigsaw puzzle, <laughs> which went together something like that. Right. We were able to drop that in the boat. That's the side profile of the engine. Okay. And that's the width of the engine at its widest point. And with you. Then trying to keep picking the engines up and dangling them into the boat, we made an MDF engine. <laughs> so that's that's now the next biggest project is is get stuck in with that transom right. shield on, drives on, and see where we go with it. That's incredible. I'm really because when you said oh we've moved on a bit. I thought we were going to turn up and it's going to be like the same, but like with a couple more bits bolted on or something. Yeah, and I, and it's, it's a transformation. Yeah, I'm always nervous that I haven't done enough, you know, because for my world, I'm only doing it as a, as a hobby, basically. Right. And I'd like to spend more time doing it, but with work commitments and stuff, I can never get as much time as I'd like on it. But I do try and then, you know, one side of the whole painted looks, you know, impressive, but the hours that get you to that stage 
are immense. You know, the primer, the base coat, the flatten, the relacquering, the colour, all that whole process just seems to take forever. You know, a period of about three weeks it was to paint that one side. Wow. Which, you know, it's worth it because unless you do that detail, you won't get the finish. Yeah. Nick, how are you? It's lovely to see you again. Always a pleasure. Ah, yes, very good. Well, it's always good to show you the boat. Absolutely. The highlights of my working life, I think, at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, what's changed? Uh, quite a bit, I think. I think there's been a good bit of progress. Uh -huh. Got engines in and more paint on. So, wow. come and have a look. Brilliant. So, at the back, yeah. we've managed to get both engines in. One is fully fitted uh, with everything ready to go. The other one's waiting for some wiring connections and the stern drive on. But you can see the stainless steel plate that we looked at last time. Oh yes, wow, look at that. That's amazing, it's like a mirror. Yeah. That's incredible. So all of this, it's all stainless right down yeah. over here. And that's for strength, I think you said. Yeah, and there's a matching plate on the inside, which sandwiches the transom together. So we did the repair on the old hole, put the stainless steel plate on the inside and the outside, and then we mounted the transom shields, which were then able to mount the engines to. The new helm is in. Wow, Just yep. Just for some screens. Uh huh. So at the minute it's quite red, but as soon as we start fitting up some of the other bits, it'll break that redness up. But the red looks fabulous, I think, and it's, it has come up really well. Wow, those are beasts. So those are a D4s, I think D4, I remember? D4 300s, that's it. I'll follow you around and kind of explain what we've done. Yeah. So I think last time we looked, we, we're talking about we've had to move the engine mounts, which is where the engines sit on those uh, boxes each side. So that central one there, everything was uh, too far forward. So we had to cut everything out, rebuild the boxes, and then move the engine feet back so that we can mount the engines on, because they're a four cylinder. And what was in before was a six cylinder, so they were slightly shorter in the length. Okay. Um, and we put, we did a lot of the ancillary stuff first, so we had lots of um, space to move. And then once that was done, we then put the, that engine in and then we moved that one into place last. So on that side, we've, we had to make some of these vertical supports to mount everything because before everything was kind of mounted on the side of the hull. Right. So because I wanted everything nice and neat in the boxes, we've had to put these sort of shelves really to put all the equipment on. So okay. that was one of the main uh, first tasks before we put the engines in. And then on there, you can see the charging diodes for the alternator charging for the um, start battery and the domestic stack. And then we've got diagnostics tool in there so that the engineers can plug into the engines. We've got engine room thermostats for fans and also we've got AC heating down there. Oh right. So when the boat's laid up, there's a engine room heater in there under that stainless steel casing, which will keep some heat under the engine. So hopefully keep the rust away. Nice, good idea. And then in those two cabinets there, we've got uh, some split charging for both engines mm -hmm. uh, and some electric battery switches. Wow. And this is all lit in here, isn't yeah. it? That's really lovely. I like that because it kind of, apart from being practical, it, it sort of shows it all off, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it. And it, you know, to when it's nice and neat like that, it is kind of a little bit on display as well as being functional. Yeah, totally. And the other thing with it is, is I quite like to keep the engine room clean. So to have it all in boxes like that and have a fresh water tap, if you get things like engine belt dust, that sort of thing, you can actually just rinse the engine room out and then uh, there's a gulper pump at the back so you can get rid of the water so you can keep it nice and clean in here. Brilliant. So that was another reason to have some of the sort of delicate electrical stuff in the cabinets. Yep. So that we can, you know, keep it nice and clean. New start batteries. This will have a little shelf on it here so that you stain the steel shelf so you can stand in the engine room without standing on the batteries. That's okay. our domestic stack in there. And then we've got some isolator switches on there. Gotcha. And then in those cabinets, that is a lot of the domestic DC. So we've got the inverter charger over there. Mm -hmm. uh, some heavy DC distribution in that cabinet. Yep. And then some connections for the, the Venus, which is our um, Victron system and also a solar regulator for the solar panel. That's brilliant. That's really, really cool. That's that's above and beyond. You know, you could have put that stuff in and not bothered with any of those cabinets and lights, yeah, and it would have yeah. been fine. Yeah, it was all part of making the engine room. For my, for me, this has got to be as good as the cabin. Right. You know, everything's got to be neat, labelled, 
Uh, we've done some wiring diagrams for sort of a future owner so that they can reference everything so it's not just something we know about. So all of that sort of stuff I think is really important when you're doing something like this, that it's everything's got a place and everything's neat and tidy. I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's genuinely impressive. And these engines, they look like beasts, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned there's another stainless steel plate yeah, on so the inside. Yeah, you just see in there is the other plate which matches the one on the outside. Gotcha. That was slightly smaller all the way around the edge, but the holes all married up so we could mount everything in. And it literally, I was so pleased, everything went in millimetre perfect. Fantastic. So it slid straight in and we used the crane and we were able just to do a controlled lift, couple of shoves and then it just sat in place perfect. That must Even been... I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been very, very pleasing. Yeah, very much. And the whole thing has been about, you know, being able to do it on my own because, you know, we built the crane and to be able to lift the engine up out of the box, bring it in, drop it in and it goes straight in was just, I mean, so rewarding. It's uh, untrue really. Yeah. That's been good. That's fantastic. So this is clearly is painted. Yeah. Spray painted, presumably. Yeah, which this, I would say, is probably the most difficult part because when you're painting the side of a hull, it's quite a big flat area. It's everything's at the right height. Whereas when you get to do a cockpit area like this, you've got lots of little intricate places where the, the product can build up so it can form things like runs, that sort of stuff. Right. So you, when you're moving around in this area, and this was all painted as one in here, apart from the console. So we were sort of through the back of the boat with the airline, trying to do all this, then going around the corner from this, trying not to let the airline touch, trying not to let your overalls touch the side of a bit of wet paint. So it was really quite tricky to do that, but I think it's come up really well. It really looks pleasing. flawless. Yeah, and this a lot of it hasn't been polished yet, so this is just a gun finish. Brilliant. And then the helm is the other thing that's the big yeah, change. So the helm, uh, that's just been painted. Um, the top section here is all of the new bit, which goes around where the black is. Okay. And all of this bottom bit is the original. So we basically cut the middle of the old console out which had the round dials, all that sort of stuff in it, the sort of oval shaped top dash. I remember, yeah. Got rid of all of that. And then with our new mold, we were able to just sit it on top of it. And we just did an epoxy scarf tape um, on the join. And we were able then just to blend it into the old console. And it looks hopefully like it grew there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So it's gonna be touch screens in here. Yeah, there's two 16 inch Garmin screens which go in there. One's going to mainly run engine instrumentation, the other one's nav and radar. Mm -hmm. And then this one here is our touchscreen um, system, which is an Android panel, and that will have an app on it which is what operates the boat. Right. Which will also be a web browser, uh, can run Netflix, Spotify, all that sort of stuff off of it. Fantastic. We could stream that to the telly, we can do the um, uh, uh, music off of it. Um, this has got a Sonos sound system which we put in as well, so we'll be able to play that from it as well. So it should be quite slick, I think. And the windscreen is uh, still missing. I think you mentioned yeah. last time that was being powder coated. Yeah, so the, the bottom rail which is in now, which is what you can see here, which is where the screen sits. So that's all back. The next bit is put the glass back in, or the perspex back in, and then all the rest of it is all done, ready to go. So right. it is, everything now is pretty much done and waiting to be fitted. So right. it will kind of accelerate now nicely because everything's made, a rate, a made ready to go in the boat. So Brilliant. Good. Well, that has been fascinating as ever. And each time I turn up, it's a really interesting story and it's really interesting to see the progression. So yeah. I really appreciate that. No problem. And we will look forward very much to the next big so, step forward. Mr. Yeah. B. Hey. How are you? Very well. Hands on as ever, I see. Yeah. You well? Splendid. Good to see you. And you. Right, what do you want to do? Have you got a boat? Uh, boat, 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 boat. Oh yeah, red, little one. Excellent, That's let's it. look at that. Let's do that. Okay. Right, where did we get to on the last visit? I think we were sort of nearly finished on this area, yes. which we are. The only thing left to go on is the drive on the port side. Okay. But new trim tabs are all on, underwater lights, and basically back there, it's good to go apart from this last bit of paintwork which we've been saving for a bit of motivation. <laughs> oh, these are the underwater lights just here? Yeah, that's it. Excellent. 
What colour are they? They're blue. Very nice. Okay. Oh, engines. Yeah, so now we're fully functional on both engines. So apart from starting them up, mm -hmm. everything is finished. Wow. Just got to put some covers on. Most of the engine room is nigh on complete. There's a few little jobs, for instance, some fuel line connections there. We need a fire extinguisher system, which we haven't quite sorted yet, but that needs to go in. And then some covers on batteries and things, and we're pretty much done in there, but we're happy with most of that is functional. So that's a nearly gets a tick, that little zone. Fantastic. We've just been firing stuff up, which is the other big task. Yeah. It's from, you know, you lay everything in and connect it all and the, the final bit is to commission it. So we've got areas that are sort of open because we're commissioning little bits and pieces. But most of it, touch wood, all worked first time and we're all looking good. So, Brilliant. Yes, yeah, exciting. So, yeah, as I say, most of the engine room done. You can see the blowers are all in, exhausts are all connected. The um, heating system on that port engine's all done, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And then cockpit-wise... You can see we've got upholstery, which is in but not fully in. We've just had it mocked up so that we could see what it was like. We've got seating here ready to go in. The T-top's all on, it just needs oh, its last yes. bit of paint. Do you know what, right under that, I didn't even notice it. Yeah, so we're, we've got the roller for here, and then yeah. we've just got to do the edges. When we paint the rest of it, we'll do all the black edges on it, just to finish it off. Even the radar's on. Radar's on, yeah, aerials are all on, the solar panel's on. We'll uh -huh. have a walk up the front in a minute so you can look back at it and then you get a better perception of it. Brilliant. But yeah, all things like the, they've just been some polishing on the underhang here. Yep. Lighting's all in. Wow, that's very cool. And do you think you'll get away without the bar on the front? Uh, no, I think I'm gonna do it. Only right. purely because, it, you know, we can look at it and we can test it as best we can, but there's no substitute for 35 knots in a headwind. Yeah. You know, and I'd just hate to see it have any problems Yeah, because you just have to go back on it. So I think for a nice centre brace, I think we're going to do just down the middle, which is quite commonplace on them, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. not unheard of. So. Yeah, and it's the kind of thing actually, and I've always found this with like windscreens and stuff where you you stand there like a boat show and you go, oh, I don't know, that's blocking the view a bit, whatever yeah. else. And then when you're actually on the boat, you never notice it. No, that's because it. you're moving around, you're moving your head around, yeah. everything's moving. And it's not like you're struggling for vision. No. So one sort of two inch pole or whatever it is down the middle is not going to make a big difference. No, absolutely. Everything here is up and running. We've got all of our operating system here, which is all up and functioning. Wow. We've got both the uh, 16 inch Garmin screens um, up and running. So we haven't configured them yet, but they're all all functional, all the uh, VHF and everything. Mm -hmm. Got the, the nice scan strut phone charger, which is a nice feature. Got all the um, joystick control, throttles, bow thruster, trim tabs. So we are ready to, we could hit the button if we had some oil and water in the engines. Brilliant. The colour scheme I think works really well. We've got the hint of the red flash in them. Yeah, yeah, the red piping here. And these are lift bolster by the look of it. Yeah, go in and try it at the helm, see what you think. Okay. Have a look at that first. I would suggest that there's a little hint of Lamborghini in these seats. Yeah. Would that be fair? Yeah, well, we, we take inspiration from anywhere we can get here. <laughs> Done quite a bit inside. We were trying to finish the cockpit area, but we ran into a few things that we were waiting on, so we've sort of switched to interior. Oh, there's another seat here. Pete's also made us some nice working covers. Oh, that's a good idea which can be on or off, you know, even if the covers are the main tonneau covers not on. Yeah. So we've managed to, so they were dead useful. And then in there, we've still maintained the uh, cool box, which you lift. That's not fixed, but yeah, the cool box is accessed uh, in there. Okay, yeah, brilliant. So we've still got that feature. Yeah. And the little plug box bit there. Yeah. Which we've trimmed and put a little light in. Nice, very nice. Yeah, so then, Moving into the cabin. Uh -huh. Shoes off inside? Not quite yet, <laughs> will be soon. Excellent. So again, we've done, Pete's been up working his magic on some oh, cockpit yeah. seat, uh, some of the saloon sofa here. Yeah. Most of the forward end now is done. There's just a couple of trims missing off of those overhead lockers um, and a mattress, which has been made at the minute. Um, that's had all the seat bases made, which are in storage and the kicker which goes on the front. Galley, 
is sort of done at the top half but not the bottom we're just waiting for a fridge to go in there we've got a microwave in this cupboard oh brilliant and then in this one in james bond fashion we have a coffee machine Excellent. with matching red and black cups <laughs> It's took me a while to find, but... It's all the details, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's it. So that's quite a nice feature. And that all yeah. runs off the inverter system. Uh -huh. So that will be free of shore power connection. Uh, new sink and the, and the taps in there. The only big area we've, we're sort of left to tackle, which I would say is probably the, the biggest area left, is the bathroom, mm. which we've kind of... We've got a plan with. We've started on a few bits, but that's to kind of the last mission, really. Yeah. Um, Electrical stuff in that cupboard is the last few tails have just been landed off just as we've been checking stuff And there's some cupboard doors to go on there and a touchscreen panel for there TV unit and everything's all in we've got some nice blinds for there and then finish the headliners And that's pretty much for a small space. We're not far off. It feels really good actually and it feels I don't know it almost feels bigger I think because it's sort of it's kind of wider that way because you're not taking the seating right the way around in the circle yeah. maybe I don't know the biggest, the biggest problem for me with it was the bed was just not long enough. Yeah. Because of that U-shape seating area they put in. Yeah. And they had the, you had to kind of knock the tops off the cushions to be able to get that extra last bit of length that you needed. Right. Otherwise, you tend to sleep kind of in the fetal position. <laughs> <laughs> it just wakes you up all the time. So that, yeah. that for me has been a big improvement to have that bed. Yeah. Um, and you can still sort of lounge on here and watch the telly, and then also if you wanted to watch the telly in bed. I think we saw on one of them that that pulls across so that Brilliant. you can view it in bed. Yeah. And then in behind there we put a few, we put both of the amps for the Sonos system, the server, the router and a few of the electrical connections. So that's a nice touch as well. That's amazing. But yeah, really pleased with that. And in here, you know, they've patterned all the carpets already. So this will come together really quickly. Yeah. It's yeah. looking good. No, really pleased. The operating system which I was talking about, that's all functioning, so that gives you uh, an overview of the boat. So someone's put a picture <laughs> of a donkey in a boat and yeah. said, well, that'll be fitting for you, Rich. Brilliant. So that'll have the image of the boat. So when the boat's launched and we've got a really nice shot of it, that'll sit on that home screen as the boat. Yeah, I think you should keep the donkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got Helm Station, which is obviously where we are. Right. So that would, you touch that page, that gives you everything to operate the boat. So all your docking lights, uh, nav lights, all your electronic battery switching, bilge pumps, anchor, windlass, trim tabs, all that sort of stuff. Yep. And then if you go to the cabin, that gives us control of the lighting and stuff in the cabin. Um, we've got tank levels, electrical equipment, which gives us our battery. So that's our uh, cabin page. Mm -hmm. So again, just different lighting, uh, heating, the temperatures and then just gives us some information about we're connected to the network and we've got shore power plugged in and then we've got things like the electrical equipment page so that gives us all of our DC values here our state of charge our voltage the current we're drawing and then in the middle gives us all of our AC so our voltage our consumption and then battery levels charger and inverter uh, selective shore power input limits and shore power plugged in notification. Unbelievable. And then yeah. also it is a web browser. So you can launch a web page. We haven't got any internet connection at the minute, but that is your web browser there. So we could just go on YouTube, search Aquaholic. Yeah. See a picture of you. <laughs> hey, what can you want from life, really? Exactly. Yeah. Ah, so this is the top of the um yeah. hard top. Yeah, which is we put some handrails on here, so if you're walking down the side deck, which is because they're quite narrow. Yeah, that's a really nice idea, actually. It gives you that extra, extra bit of hand folding. That's going to be amazing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Remarkable. Wow. Thank you. It's um, yeah, no, it's it's it amazes me every time I come and see it. And uh, and yeah, it, it does feel like, as you rightly say, it feels like you're on the last lap now. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing better than. I mean, I, I put the upholstery in mainly because you were coming, but yeah. you know, when you do that sort of stuff, that really does sort of symbolise you're getting close to the end once you're fitting up upholstery. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's time for another Project Sunseeker. How's it going, Richard? All good, Nick. Good to see you. And you? Always a pleasure. A bit behind schedule, but um, we are getting very close to dipping it in. So excellent. We've got quite a lot of progress uh -huh. and lots of finishing bits just ready to go on. 
So, Perfect. Yeah, we, next week, uh, so after the bank holiday, we're out of, of the workshop. We're going to put it here. We're going to lift it up, anti-foul all the bottom, and then we're good to go. So last few finishing bits, cockpit upholstery. Okay. That's ready to go in. Yep. It's looking really good. Um, round this side, we've got everything in ready to go into the water. Volvo have been up, done their pre-splash PDI. Okay. So both engines have been running, all systems checked, calibrated, ready to go. Just got the props to put on that side. Oh, uh, stainless steel props, look at that. Yeah. Wow. Good. Yeah, another mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> All the paintwork's done. Yeah. It's got a few little fettling bits to do on the T top. Okay. Um, and everything is functional, tested, and been run. So we really are quite close to the end. Wow. The last bit, which you can just see here, which is happening this afternoon, is the decks. The okay. remainder of the decks going down. So yep. As soon as they're down, cockpit upholstery in, out of the workshop, wash down, polish, anti foul, in the water. Fabulous. We can't wait for that. Come That's going to be great. Let me put you some lights on. So, we'll put some, we've got the other Oh, lights. look at that. Yeah. And that's obviously controlled by your phone. Yeah, so I can control everything in true James Bond fashion. Of course, we'll just expect no less from you. Yeah, it's what he would have done in the day. Yeah. <laughs> um, cockpit lights I'll put on for you. And cool. Oh, it's got a name. Yes. Now yeah. you see, you asked us to choose a name, didn't you? And yeah. you've gone for absolutely none of the ones that we chose. Uh, no, it's not true. I'm sure I did see that name yeah? on, on there. Yeah, oh, I fair do enough. quite like it. Um, yeah. And yeah. it's kind of, it suits the boat and has a bit of a hidden meaning, which stands for Realise Every Dream. Ah, I like it. Which obviously this boat was a dream of mine. So. Yeah. I thought well, that's quite fitting, really, because it's the colour as well. That must be your life's motto, surely. Well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Try it and realise every dream. That's fantastic. That looks really, really good. And we've got some blue lights which just come out from underneath the rear yeah. holding there. Which yeah. Just shine and won't be too in your face. Perfect. And they come on with the cockpit lighting. Very nice indeed. That looks great. So you've got upholstery, I can see bits of upholstery going in. Yep, and I say all the seating and everything's back in. Yep. Uh, helm and everything is all done good, screens and everything are all back in, which I don't think they were before. Oh, that's right, no, you're quite right. And we've got the F1 inspired halo on the T-top. Ah, yes, yes, brilliant. So let me put some cabin lights on as well. Right, there's some lighting on. Fantastic, and that lighting from your phone, is that through the internet? Can you control it from anywhere? Yeah, so basically there's a server on the boat, so I can connect um, numerous devices to the network, but mm -hmm. also I can operate this from anywhere. Right. So I could be at home, and I could turn the lights on, I could check the batteries, and it's a slave of the main screen. So everything you see there is repeated on my phone. Got you, so okay. Yeah, I've got remote access anyway, you don't have to be on the local network of the boat, I right. can be anywhere to operate it. And actually this looks like it's been finished since I was last here. The, this top on here and this red trim around here. Yeah, that's it. Cup no. holder. New compass and then two cup holders. Wow. Everything is functioning, engines are all full of um, fuel and coolant and oil, so they're ready to go. Wow. And yeah, it was a nice um, nice sound when they started for the yeah, first time. <laughs> I bet it was. It must have been very yeah. satisfying, I should yeah, think. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Because that's the point where it must feel like it's coming alive. Yeah, definitely. You've been in there for so many hours, you know, not really feeling like you've made much headway or you haven't really got much to show all that time you spent because you've just been tailing off lots of little bits. But when you saw it all finished and both engines were running, it was like, ah, oh, the end of the project is near. Perfect. Which is good. Let's have a little look then, and see what we've got in here. So we've got the illuminated um, electrics on the sides. We've got um, obviously engine room lighting, really good engine room lighting actually. That's, um, that's incredibly well lit up. And then all the checker plate and all that in there as well. We've got the, the start batteries under there, uh -huh. domestic stack under there. That's the C Fire, uh, Fireboy um, fire extinguisher system. Yep. That's awesome. So we've got another screen here, which we can operate from. So that's another operating system for the yeah. boat. So again, that's a tablet, so web browser, and then also the boat operating system. So that can repeat just if you're in the cabin, want to turn some localized lights on. Yep. Then we've got the 
electrical space in there, which yep. is all finished. Yep. And then we've got the, the AC down here. Uh huh. And then a bit of storage. Bathroom is just waiting for the door, which we're just polishing at the minute, which goes back on there. The macerator toilet um, and the heated towel radiator and all the heating systems all in. That's really smart. Find a panel for there is just being painted as well. Yeah. And then all of that stuff is the fitted carpets, which will go all down here, all the um, seating for in here. Mattress is in with all the fitted sheets, so we're pretty much working through this way. Clear all the tools and stuff out, and we're ready to go. Wow. It's looking good. Exciting. Yeah, when it's not all cluttered, and once you start unwrapping this, that's when you really see the final thing and obviously carpets make a big difference yeah put the carpets down and then totally. you need to take your shoes off yeah <laughs> at last <laughs> for the first time yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. it's interesting actually i remember when i used to be selling uh, new princess boats and you go down to the factory to do factory visit with new owners yeah and it'd be like three weeks before the boat's going to go in the water and honestly every time i'd come away thinking i are never going to get that yeah. finished look at the state yeah. of it yeah. and then three weeks later there it is looking absolutely pristine bobbing yeah. up and down ready to go yeah. and uh and this is much the same it, look, all of the hard work has been done so once you've cleared out and the carpets go down and the cushions go in it just looks finished yeah but once we gears in here and stuff it, it just tends to look like a bit of a building site still yes <laughs> yeah of course course but you can really see the potential you need things like the headlining now all done yeah yeah and everything is up and running tested so you know as soon as we're kind of out of here we're just into the last cosmetic stage yeah and then into the water yeah and when's that going to be richard uh well my dates are terrible because <laughs> we were supposed to be in in april yeah um, but i would say we're about two weeks from launch right yeah currently wow. so we're close yeah. We've just got to pull these final few bits and pieces together to get yeah. it in the water. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm looking forward to it, really looking forward to it. Yeah, the finishing line is in sight. Yeah, definitely. It is exciting times indeed. I've had a phone call from Richard and things are afoot on Project Sunseeker. So we're diving in to come and take a look. This is the big news. She's out. <laughs> Caught me in the act. Absolutely. Look at that. It's it's in the light of day. It emerged. It certainly did. Yeah. Wow. Only had to take the radar down. That was it. Yeah. So it came out dead easy. Brilliant. So just a bit of hole preparation and uh -huh. anti foul oh, and I'm gonna save the cleaning and stuff for the water. Yeah. Just because it's gonna get a bit of a mess on the way down. So oh, yeah. I just she's just gotta cross that, getting it out of the workshop environment and phase two in the water and then finishing in the water. Wow. Yeah, but it's looking really good. There she is in the light of day. Fantastic. Let's go up here. Check that out. Well, the next time we see Project Sunseeker, I think, is launch time. There is no getting away from it. It is six o'clock in the morning six i've checked all three clocks in the car it's definitely six o'clock in the morning i didn't even know there was a six o'clock in the morning but richard god bless him said oh yeah just meet us at six and um i couldn't miss this it's launch of project sunseeker so it's a gray day <laughs> it's currently raining and uh and we're apparently gonna do it boats going in it is a momentous occasion so uh, let's wander across and see if we can find Richard and Red.
Good morning. Made it. How are we this morning? Excited. <laughs> Nervous? <laughs> Nervous, yeah. Yep. All of the above. That was a good run. Excellent. Yeah, 30 mile an hour, dead steady. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Good. Hopefully the next part goes as well. Phase one, eh? Yeah. Complete. <laughs> yeah. Thick. Good man. This is Cliff, this is Richard's dad. Hey there. So what do you think? What do you think of what Richard's done? Oh, fantastic. It's really, I'm proud to see what he's done. It is really, really beautiful boat. It's think. amazing, isn't it? What an yeah. achievement. That's it, she's afloat. Absolutely bloody brilliant. Wow, I actually feel quite emotional about that. That is bloody brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Well done, Richard. Well, well, well done. <laughs> actually, I'm actually welling up here. This is unbelievable. Richard. All good. Made it. Yeah? How do yeah. you feel? Uh, relieved. <laughs> <laughs> relieved that it's floating, relieved that it works. Went lovely, I thought. Yep. Fired nearly on the button. Quick couple of checks and we're good. So, um, I'm sure that everybody's going to want to know, yeah. when are we going to take her out? Well, I think we need to just get her cleaned up. Yep. So, couple of days wait for a good weather window yeah and we'll be good yeah i'm as keen as you are <laughs> <laughs> understood fantastic well we'll watch the weather yeah and uh, and our diaries yeah and i'll do some polishing yeah and we'll be good to go we'll make it happen yeah fantastic phase one complete absolutely well more than phase one yeah. phase i mean we're we're yeah. at the, uh, the you know. phase one yeah, yeah true true brilliant well i just want to say massive congratulations Thanks, appreciate it it's really super appreciate it. super impressive it really yeah, it is. is and